Have you, like me, ever wondered what's actually inside one of these DJI drones? And I have to say, I have a few times, and now the Mini 3 is here with obstacle avoidance and a, a pretty good camera on there and all sorts of extra gadgetry to upgrade it from the Mini 2. I have to say, I am extremely interested about what's going on inside here. So we decided to smash one up and find out. No, only joking. Don't worry, we're not actually going to be breaking apart this particular Mini 3 Pro. It's quite safe. Instead, we have to say thank you to the guys over at Drone Optics who have done the job for us. Now, Drone Optics offer parts and accessories for all DJI, Parrot, Unique, and Otel drones that actually also buy used and broken drones for cash as well. So there's a link in the description to their business, uh, droneoptics.repair. Uh, so go and check them out uh, after you've watched this video. Now, to get a second opinion on what's actually happening inside this little drone, I've brought along Ian from Mads Tech to help us out. So, hi, Ian. How are you, sir? I am fantastic, Sean, as always. Thank you for having me on. Excellent. And anybody who, for some strange reason, doesn't have Ian, Mads, Mads Tech is, is the channel name. There is a link in the description, along with the Drone Optics uh, link as well, actually. But go along and support Ian's channel. Um, if you actually, if you enjoy seeing things broken apart, um, <laughs> but also put back together again. And the reason I'm not taking one of these things apart is because I would basically break it. It would be a little pile of parts at the end. And yeah, it wouldn't really be, a, it's not technically a teardown when you can't put it back together, is it? So I think, I think if I did it, it would be broken as well because I usually break something. <laughs> the accusations are always there from people. They really are. So, um, but this is, but, this is an interesting one because it's one of those ones where they've obviously put a lot of technology inside this tiny little drone and they've yes. managed to keep it under 250. And so it's going to be interesting to see what is and isn't there as well, of course. Um, so here they are already taking these very, very, easily and and calmly taking these screws out i would already be breaking into a cold sweat by now uh, so something i've noticed is the plastics are very thin on this drone. yes very, yes as very. they're now, popping now, it's very precarious isn't flexible. it and okay there, there's a payoff they have on a drone of this size to get the technology in its weight and i noticed that with the hotel when i did my review on the hotel you could flex it yes. picking it up yes. you know it, it's that thin. What, what, um, what do you remember the, the mini one's legs which were foam yeah basically with yeah. a bit of plastic it's to, to sort of yeah oh, it was yeah, very sorry. strange oh so there we are oh, we, we have, have the first ooh, open up gps gps I go back controversial and, controversial go back for mavic 3 users was there <laughs> it's an interesting one isn't it so uh, it, it's right on the top nice and in the middle in. yeah exactly looking good yeah now this does use the same GPS sat systems as the Mavic 3 although it does. they have no issues at all do apparently. you think they've changed how it happens in a software point of view so as, I think as in, must, as in the pairing changed. must be different is what I'm thinking because it literally yeah. gains sats like that. It so does. It's you know, crazy. Okay, so there we've got the antenna, which is smaller than the Mavic 3s. It's it's bigger than we've seen on previous models. Yeah, something's obviously changed. As I said uh, when I looked at the Mavic 3 GPS, there's nothing fundamentally bad about it. Yeah. So there are bits of that problem we don't fully understand because I haven't tested one in an aircraft and stuff. But from a you know, DJI have been making GPS drones for whew, 10 years now, plus mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. So something's strange on that one. But no, but it is good it, to see it sat at the top there. And it is, yeah. it is. It's in the right place. Exactly. In the middle as well, which is good, which means if someone straps something on the front, it's not going to be over the top. We've got what looks to be a plastic frame and then... Mm. Uh, that might not be plastic, actually. Can you see there's heat compound going from the cans to the top, which is quite yeah. interesting. Obviously, thermal is... Oh, no, no. It's, yeah, that's like a heat sink. It is. Very nice. Um, do, you, do you think that might be because there there isn't... As far as I'm aware, we'll, we'll find out in this video, but I don't think there's actually uh, a fan inside the Mini yeah. 3. So I wonder if the heat sink is a bit more developed. To... They're probably dragging air through behind the gimbal. Yep over the top of the board and out the back yes. the, that, that's so that heat sink be... is in the perfect position and again obviously separating the gps module and everything yeah yeah right between the two could all these push wires. yeah you've got the antennas Ooh. you've got the four could you see still see the plastic moving as he's prying them <laughs> yeah, off it's crazy you know? isn't it because half, so half the, board... the thing is being delicate isn't it as you're popping the board yeah. out and everything could because there's so many things that can just snap instantaneously and obviously one of the reasons why uh, drone optics have, have done this teardown is because they repair drones so obviously yeah. they need to know what's going on so the good thing is this drone will go back together so we're not we're not uh, if, if i tried to take my own one here apart it, it would have been a wasted drone frankly because it, it wouldn't have come back from that 
Now, what's really interesting there is this is a single board design, basically. So everything is on that main board. We've got our main chipset on one side, our ESC and motors, I'm guessing, on the other. There's a small board at the front for the gimbal from the look of it. So we've got the gimbal mounting and, and obviously the board that holds the cameras, the front cameras and the, da the downward facing VPS cameras. But I suspect there's not really processing on that. I suspect that's all just yes. boards to hold the components. No, exactly. I completely agree with you. The frog's head, the eyes are coming yep, off the frog. Indeed, Kermit's Kermit's eyes are off. Yes, you can just see there's cameras either side. Very, I mean, obviously they have Ooh, to keep it very, very simple. That what the little Ooh. lead. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so that is a module. Mm. I wonder if that's the compass. You, the mag. I mean, it, it might, might be a nice place to put it out the way because if you look that's just going down and in so it's some form of sensor right up there out the way that's interesting connected to the oa as well yeah hmm that's interesting i mean i suppose they would run something like the compass off of it just from the point of view that it's in it yeah you want it, it out the way of the battery exactly. you want it out the way of the gps and the heat <laughs> which I... you want to just get it so it's it's far away from any metal as possible quite interesting it'd be interesting to see if there's one on the other side Ooh. then you've got this bottom cover they never looked in the early reviews or the early leaks that all looked very half ha haphazard the way those front covers went on yes. you know what i mean yes it didn't look very dji and i i always said i don't think it's right but it is because it, it's what released yeah no but... i did i I've, but, but I, I said the same thing and also i said the same thing about the original mini i thought the original mini yeah. was a toy and there's no way dji would make that um yeah. and uh, yeah Okay. So really, that's just the bottom cover. There's, yep. there's a connector going over the top. So we've there's got the, the bottom vision sensor. Yeah, vision module. And again, we've got the TOF sensors in the middle because um, there's no opt, there's no uh, audible. So you've not got um, ultrasonic. You've just got visual on this. And then you've got the basic sensors. It's amazing because all of this started in the Phantom 3 and look how they've got it's it. It's crazy, now. isn't it? It's, it's so yeah, crazy when you it, think just how small everything is and... Uh, I mean, you know, part part of the art form here is heat distribution and fitting yeah. everything in, frankly. And this is what DJ do best. Their industrial engineering is the best in the industry by far. Their software, not always the case, yeah. but their industrial design. Absolutely. Is, no one can get near them on this. They really can. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see the production line for these as well, yeah. from the point of view that, you know, these, these are, this is a fairly precision build um and <laughs> that's going to be expensive to make yeah. it should just based on how much intervention and labor is going into all of those little cables a bit like an iphone with all of those little ribbon cables it's not so much like the bigger drones which is just modules no exactly um, they've got the gimbal okay so next up yeah we've got the camera and gimbal and uh, again very carefully <laughs> taking off that front cover i know on on on, on the voiceover that, that they sent across with it they said there is there's just slight amounts of glue as you unpop these things as Isn't well it? so it's okay um it, which is interesting obviously just to keep things in place yeah, just to keep things in place but as you say even when you looked at that cover from an industrial point of view an industrial manufacturer point of view yeah. it's so precise yeah. with with you know uh, any one of those clips aren't in place you feel like it wouldn't be as as as, um, uh, as structurally sound uh, but so clever how they do it okay yeah, so it's supported on both yeah. sides and then they're popping it out and makes complete sense so it, the only downside is that looks quite a lot of work to change that it, from a it user does, point doesn't of view it? i mean yeah. you, you're not going to be able to do that particularly because obviously when you look at it on the drone itself yeah. it does look like a pretty simple gimbal um but that is as you say that is a lot of work to get to that point um, oh there's a board vertically in the back ooh. ask the battery ask the bms the battery oh, yeah. management board there we go so oh Oh, is that e and ESCs? There you go. So that's the motor, the ESCs, and the battery management on one board. Oh, brave, brave woman there. <laughs> there we go. You can see the FETs on either side. So that's the that's the main ESC there. But again, that looked like you've got to completely strip it to change. It does, and obviously some soldering yeah. as well. And yeah. So I suspect the manufacture cost on this drone is actually quite high. I, I think so. When you compare it to like the Mini 2 teardowns and things, there is yeah. just a lot more 
going into it and it, it, it doesn't feel like something that even i don't know it, people can take this thing apart and put it back together again obviously because the guys the guys here at drone drone optics are doing it but it, yeah. it, it does feel like more of a skilled job than than yeah. than previously which i suppose is going to happen when you have sensors all over it yeah and, and it's like the integration with tight integration comes repairability issues that's inevitable now dj doesn't really have a good reputation on right to repair and stuff like that they don't really no. sell parts to end users they they limit it to dealers and they don't even make every part available to dealers as well especially since they introduced their care refresh scheme where they want really people to take out that insurance and send it back to them um i think on a repairability scale it's going to be pretty low from a if you're going to score it you know i think it's probably a three or a four off the top of my head from how easy it is agree. But you're not going to be able to get the parts no, anyway. But the only good thing right. is there is always a good supply of parts on these drones through people losing them, smashing them up. Usually remote controls are easy to find on eBay. Yes, exactly. Yes. There's, <laughs> there's usually the Facebook post, isn't there? Yeah. Fly more kit only. <laughs> yeah. Remote remote and two batteries. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's the mechanism on the arms. And then we have the frame, which the obviously we, yeah. we recognize this from one of the early leaks. <laughs> mm, yes, <laughs> um, yes. Which was the thing that was, for about a month there, was all we knew about this drone. Um, it's, it's highly impressive when you look at the, the overall industrial engineering. Yeah. Complex, difficult. I will say the boys have probably looked at this and thought, wow, okay, I hope I don't have to replace just that cable. That's it. Because <laughs> um, if, we, if we think about a drone like this, the traditional damage is going to be gimbal arms that's where the, the big issues are going to be but i have to say i know it's not you know the, the mini 3 has been and I, 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 I have a review on my mini 3 um review coming out which i don't feel like you should be able to put out on launch day if you haven't had the drone for a while so i've, I've been no. sat playing with mine for a while so i do have a review coming and i do have my issues with it but i have to say when you see it laid out with the amount of tech that is there i can see why this drone is a thousand pound drone in inverted commas yeah, it, it, I suspect the, their biggest cost here is manufacturing and yeah. components. Um, if we look at the Mini 3, there's nothing new here. So the Mini 3 is very much the the combination of years of experience making drones. You yes. know, if we look at the cameras, it's, it's, nothing. It's but, doing what we already have, but doing it very, very well, small, essentially, isn't smaller, it? Smaller, better. Yeah. yeah. And, and not necessarily better, actually. Better is a difficult word yes. to use because, you know, it, it, there is always a compromise, you know. And, and I know everyone was very, oh, oh my God, this is amazing. It, it's nothing new. You know, what you have here, you had in the Phantom 4 Pro, three four years ago it's just a smaller package mm. and that's the impressive bit here is is what we've been able to squeeze in i think from dji's point of view what they've been able to do is pack all this technology into this is incredible and that's the same for autel they've both now done the same thing which is a super compact drone and and interestingly autel did this first that's the real interesting thing here. Autel did it first. Now, one thing which we will look at very quickly um, before yeah. we, we finish this here uh, is a couple of images that you very kindly sent across to us, which is of an RC um, breakdown, teardown. It is. Um, and it, this, this is very interesting, particularly this picture, isn't it? It is. Now, this is a user on Facebook has posted this, and they've torn down their new... What is the official name for this RC? Because just I've lost... RC. It's just RC, yeah. 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 It, they've really confused RC things Pro with and RC. RC, so, RC. Yeah. yeah, you've got RCN1. They could have just called it the RC Standard or something. Yeah. But yeah, so we've got the internal images where we look like we've got, I think it's 218650 batteries. You've got, um, in the middle there, you've got an I.O. board. But the real interesting thing here is the antennas, because this is where people have been complaining about this remote. Okay, we know it's got a low init screen. We know it's cut back. It's really cut back from a power point of view as well. But we've got the antennas down there at the bottom, which appear to be sort of, they're not PCB antennas. They're sort of plastic, yeah, copper traced antennas. And the reality is they will simply be compromised by their location. We don't know what the game figures are on the antennas. It might be minimal, but the overall issue will be they will be compromised as a result of where they are in the remote. Yes. They're, t they're tied up really close to all of the electronics. You've got all that noise. You've got all that interference. Again, you can see it, and that's a, that's a good one there where you can see them at the top. You've got, you know, th there's a lot going on in the There is, the there is, and, and and you have to wonder if if this could be where we're seeing the uh, less than favourable range tests and things. Yeah. And and I don't mean obviously I'm not a fan of range tests, um, but I yeah. but I mean just trying to get the thing 
you know, to the edges of visual line of sight uh, seems to be a problem for some people at the moment, even in relatively open skies. Um, and yeah, it, it, I, I suspect it's, it's interesting. Be very temperamental. So it'll be very directive. I can't see the type of antenna they are isn't clear. There's a full copper strip on the bottom and then you can see it comes up the front and you've then got the two waveguides either side. I suspect they're directional. I suspect um but more than anything they're compromised by location i suspect this remote will see great improvement mm. with external antennas we, we did wonder and with the got... early pictures didn't we when we didn't see the yeah. the, the the antenna stalks which we which yeah. we're used to seeing on smart controllers and the rc pro and things yeah. like that and 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 you know even the cheapest fpv ready to fly kit has has its little yeah. antennas etc and that type of thing so you did it was it was strange not to see that on on a dji remote because obviously you know yeah. any even the most basic dji remote even the mini ones uh, 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 yeah. basic remote had those external antennas to help with the with the direction um uh, it, it's it's a strange one it is and you know it'll be heavily down to how people are holding it you know the direction of the signal coming out um you know we saw with the rcn1 the antennas are actually in the device holder at the top yes. which gets it up out the way a little bit i I suspect this remote would see great improvement just by a mod with some traditional yeah. antennas. And it looks fairly easy. I'll be honest, if you look there, you've got some UFL connections, the cables. It will be, there'll be a good market for antenna mods I on agree. this remote. And, and this they're, is probably because, really again, fully internal antennas on a DJI remote. This is Gen 1. So, again, yeah. you know, we are probably looking at, you know, the Mini 5 will still have internal antennas, but they would yeah. have mastered them by then. So, unfortunately, we become beta testers a little bit from from that point of view but but that's what happens it happens in the automotive um, um yep. uh, market it happens everywhere frankly um and, and it's cost of production yeah. you know look they're trying it's all about bom so any ex additional external part that they have to mold and change costs money if you look here it's probably an off-the-shelf antenna part mm -hmm. that they've been able to buy in and all they've had to do is mold a place for it in the plastic and, and that is where the cost saving is. You know, if they had to add the external antennas, it, that remote, every bit of it is about cutting costs. 100%. It's a simple yeah, that, exactly. You know. Okay, so there you go, everybody. There is the teardown of the Mini 3 and a bit of RC in there as well. Thanks to Ian for sending those those pictures across to me. Um, always good fun. Um, and yeah, I mean, t to me, it, it, it's, it's pretty much what I was expecting. I think things like the yeah. heat sink were a nice surprise it was good to see the gps module at the top there that type of thing and but otherwise i think pretty much as we really you know when you look at it physically it is kind of what you would expect to see on the inside there and probably you know built exactly as well as i thought it would be as well frankly and it, it does start to back up the value of the drone in my opinion but um but yeah let us know what you think in the comments below again make sure you subscribe to ian's channel just like uh, 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 the whole world is subscribing right now because it's almost like there's this awesome channel that 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 um that not enough people knew about and suddenly everybody's realizing it you've got to go to his sunday show and watch his shock as hundreds of people come in to watch what he's got to say because <laughs> yeah. that part is almost hilarious and watching ian go why, yeah. well, what are you all doing here it's, yeah why are you here yeah. <laughs> it's like we come to see you ian um, it, it, it's that overnight success that's taken seven years yeah, exactly. is, is the term yeah, I use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, so, yeah, but, but thank you very much for joining us again, uh, uh, again today. And I, I look forward to seeing you again soon on Geeksvana. It is always a pleasure, Sean, as always. Thank you.